Good day. In this video, we will be looking at the new TPC version 590. I will highlight all the enhancements and updates made for this new version. Let's first of all look at some post-processing options. We have upgraded the post-processing engine to the Titan processing engine. The Titan processing engine includes all the constellations now available for processing. As you can see in the slide, the improvements between the previous processing engine called Astra and Titan is quite significant in the amount of points that you get fixed as well as the accuracies. This will greatly improve your work, especially for mobile mapping and UAV and handheld scanner PPK data jobs. Next up is photogrammetry improvements. We have included a broad third party UAV support enabled now with a new sensor library for 590. If you import data into photogram module now, you will see that you have the sensor options already loaded for you. The sensor options are being read from the EXIF or XMP tags on your imagery. If it is missing, you can add them manually as well and store this to your sensor library for future use. Other enhancements include expanded flight area boundary, sharper building edges, elimination of moving objects, as well as illumination balance of highly reflective spots on shiny surfaces like glass and metal. Next up, we'll look at the enhancements made for stockpiles. I'll just upload a point cloud and then take you through the enhancements made for point clouds and feature extraction. First change you will notice is extract stockpiles. This is a simplified way to extract point stockpiles from point clouds. You will see you can extract a new boundary or select an existing one. You simply click on your stockpile that you want to extract and set the area of the stockpile to make sure this encloses the whole stockpile. The ground flatness you can set to what you see needed for your area around your stockpile. Click on the extract boundary, the stockpile name will pop up. You can choose a layer you want to use, add that boundary when you're happy with it, and you can then do a volume calculation and a report down here to show you the volume for that specific stockpile. You can add as many stockpiles as you want with this functionality and once you are done with all the boundaries that you want to utilize, you can simply click on create volume. You'll get a base area, slope area, volume, a date and the initial surface that was used for this volume. Another enhancement we made is deep learning for terrestrial point cloud classification. To show you what this looks like is if you go on to the extract classified point cloud regions you'll now see you get an option for outdoor terrestrial this deep learning functionality only works with terrestrial data for now and we will expand the functionality into the next releases once you select that you will see you can now choose your point cloud and you can see we enhance the amount of classes you can extract from the point cloud Ground, steps, medium vegetation, high vegetation, low point noise now, buildings, you've got dividers like fencing, poles and signs are separated as well as power lines. You also have the option, you also have the option to refine your classification as well for ground, poles and signs and buildings. Just to give you an indication of what this looks like. Once it is done. As you can see over here, here you can see in the 3D view, you'll have a bit of an idea. Now you can see the medium vegetation, high vegetation. You can see the poles and signs are separate point clouds now, as well as noise for people and cars that are now separated. The dividers you can see like walls are now being picked up as well. Steps will also be separated into their own point cloud. The same will still happen with power lines as well. And this functionality can only be used with terrestrial scan and data. Feature extraction improvements. You'll also see that we have included improvements for 
extract point features. The manual functionality has been improved. You will see that we now are able to map the diameter of the manual much better, as well as the center of the manual will be extracted much better as well. When you're extracting point features like trees or posts, once you've done the automatic extraction, you will see that you now have the option to change the feature code for each individual extraction. There is no longer, you no longer need to just choose one feature code for the whole extraction. You can manually edit each individual one as you go through the QC process. We've also added extract geometry enhancement where you can now choose a single or multiple type, create the shape, and when you choose multiple, you will see you can now create an area. That means if there is a crossing or lines like you see over here for the parking, you can extract one of those lines creating that shape, then choose the area going around this whole parking area, and then tell it to extract and the functionality will extract each of these lines automatically for you. No more need to manually do each individual line as you previously had to do. Next set of enhancements is to do with the cadastral functionality. We have a feature server support now available in GIS module. So now you will see we don't just connect to the GIS schema or the SDE file. You can now actually connect to your service directly on our ArcGIS portal. As you can see, you just need to add a connection name. Once you've done that, you can select the data source. We will select the ESRI service now. And then when you click on connect, you'll have the option to enter the feature service URL, authenticate the URL for private service, and then you need the client ID and the return URL. Once you add, add that in and select, you will then be able to connect to your feature service through TBC. Just take note that you do need to add TBC as a client on your ArcGIS portal service before this will work. More on this functionality in a later video. We also added some new functionalities for dividing an area. So if you have a specific cadastral parcel that you would like to split up, let's quickly switch on the cadastral over here. So let's say in this part, this large parcel over here is something you would like to divide. You now have the divide option in TBC. Under your CAD function, CAD tab, you will now find the divide area. Once you select that, Select a 2G object that's on the same elevation. Once you've selected that object, you can go to the origin, select the origin, select the endpoint. You will see an arrow pointing up into which direction that the, the subdivision will happen. And now you can tell it number of area, target area, or distance from base. And you can decide in how many areas you want to subdivide that area. Once you've done that, you press divide, it will divide your parcel into five equal amounts according to our settings over here. Another functionality to be added is now that you have one single point on your cadastral boundary, let's say for instance that is your starting point and none of your other vectors on your CAD line has any points added to it. You can now do the integrate points into geometry functionality. What this does is you select the point geometry you want to use. Let's go to that point. Once you selected that, you can call, you can name the starting point name and you can add a feature code as soon as you process that. It will run around your boundary and add the points according to your point name that you've given it. The next announcement we made was in creating points at station offsets. You can now go to the survey tab and find the create points at chain each offset functionality. In here, you can give your point a name where you want to start or your 
collection parameters, get a starting point, and then enter the change and offset for each point. That will then calculate the offset and you can add those points to your data set. The data can be used at a later stage as well. The last enhancement we made for Cadastral was under the Create Kogu functionality. If you have a parcel and you have the instructions for that parcel, you now want to replace the boundaries and the missing line pegs for that specific boundary. You can now enter an end It. and once you've done that you will see that in your adjustment you now have an option of selecting a grant or boundary compass calculation method once you select that it will calculate the rotation and closure for you using the grant boundary or compass method this way you can then calculate your adjustment to replace the pegs for that boundary. For the scanning enhancements, we've added a drape object on point clouds. What this functionality allows you to do is if you have a 2D geometry or CAD line that you've added and you would like to move that line to fit onto your point cloud, you simply click the line, select the point cloud and then choose a strategy on how you want the elevations to be added to your line. You can see you have quite a few options to choose from. Select the correct one. The search distance from within where the vertex is that you would like to elevate for that line. Choose the radius or distance. And then you can choose interpolate missing elevations. Choose a layer where you want that line to be added to. You can even delete the existing line if you don't need it anymore and apply and it will shift that line onto the existing point cloud so that you now have an elevated line that fits onto your current point cloud. Tunneling improvements made in version 590 include simplified data preparation, you force the data prep by automatically translating 3D tunnel cross sections into a tunnel module. We have improved construction reporting, Enhanced analytics for tunnel surveyors, survey reports for informed quality control decision making and confidence in deliverables. We added more robust insights using comprehensive statistics for construction tolerance and as built documentation. Last enhancement just to mention is TBC mobile mapping batch processing. So automatically process one or, one or multiple mobile mapping missions with one click. So you generate mobile mapping scans, you colorize the scans, classify the scans, save your batch parameters for future use. This enables you to have no operator interaction needed, get your data automatically processed overnight, start using your data immediately in TBC, and no TBC UI needed batch runs on external services. That concludes all the enhancements and updates for TBC 590. Please have a look out for more in detail videos for each of these enhancements and updates that will be released in the coming weeks.